Hello, welcome back to Wire Management Series. On today's episode, we'll be looking at restrictions, how to place restrictions on an account and the type of restrictions you were able to apply and how you were able to remove those restrictions by time. So we have, I have a couple of them here, which I have listed to give us a guideline on what to expect, right? So we'll be looking on how to block and unblock an account, right? We'll also be looking on how to place um, um, PNC, which simply represent post no debit, right? So we'll also be looking at PND, which represent uh, a post no credit rather. So we'll also be looking at PND, which is post no debit, right? So we'll also be looking at our um, USSD restrictions from our system. Also we'll be looking at our WhatsApp board restrictions. So we'll also be looking at lastly, learning of an amount on the customers, right? So that on an amount is learned when uh, a fund or phones enter into the customer account, the system automatically deduct or hold the phones, right? Are you able to keep track of the lane amount per time? So come with me in. You know, so we'll be starting from the beginning, which is the blocking of an account. This is quite easy. Just follow the step, just follow me step by step so be able to understand the flow on how it works. All right, come back with me. So I'll jump back to the dashboard, All right? So everyone, that have access to the wild banking light management system will have this in the face. Depending on the kind of permissions you have, whether you are a teller or a staff, right? So um, depending, it basically depends on the, on the permission you have that determine the futures you may have an access to, right? So but I'll be guiding you step-by-step step on how to place. So the first thing we're looking at is to, is to place a block or a restriction on a customer. So we have basically two ways to do that. So uh, the first way I will go ahead and click on customer management, then go ahead. We have the last option on the customer management, which is customer restrictions. So I'll go ahead and, and click that, right? So we have list of customer here. So the first thing I need to do is to hit on them and provide the customer's account number basically. So add a customer account number, the customer phone number. Please do not use name for search because we may have uh, different kind of persons or different people who bear the same name, right? Well, account number is unique, right? And phone number most likely can be unique, except if you have multiple accounts with same phone number, if that is allowed within your organization, right? So the first thing you do, since hence I have two accounts basically for test, I'll go ahead and select one, right? But most likely, I'm actually expected to um, I'm actually expected to provide the account number per se there for the account to be fresh for me, right? As as the limit of the account actually ten, right? So you can have a thousand, but you have to provide the account number for the system to be able to filter to understand which of the account you needed to restrict by time. Okay, so we're moving to the next step, which is a restriction aspect of it. Okay, so we have the, the first block deposit. We'll come back to that. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll be focusing on the purpose of this video. So I'll, I'll be selecting block transactions, right? So I'll be, I'll, I'll be focusing on block transactions. So I'll select blocks transaction. It's important you give reasons why you are blocking transaction, right? So that the so that whoever that is unblocking it will have we will have the clue of why the transaction was um, blocked. Okay, probably you can say, okay, I discovered. Okay, hold on a second. I discovered. I discover. Whatever you can actually write whatever because of time, right? So you, you can actually write or whatever you discover fraud. You discover. Uh, suspicious activity, whatever it is, right? You can go ahead and say that, that you can even place your name, wherever you do, you cannot say by Shema, right? However, the system takes note of who that blocked it. So wherever, as long as you've actually placed restriction, right? To have a long, long test. So I just need to do is to go ahead and click on set. All right, so um, what happened right now is once you click on the set, the customer will not be able to make a deposit and the customer will not be able to make withdrawal. So once it, if the customer approach any of your staff or any of the branches, they won't be able, it keeps showing them, um, 
it keeps saying uh, this account is not allowed to perform transaction at this moment, right? So any account that you see that has similar response, understand that the account is on the restrictions, okay? So basically that's how you can actually use to block a customer's account. So there will not be a deposit or withdrawal that happens on the account. Okay, we have another option for you to unblock the account, right? So uh, that is quite easier. So all you need to do is to enter the account number. Like I said, you may have thousands of account number that be the same. So we, we do not recommend you to start scrolling or start guessing by name. So we recommend you to provide the account number, right? So once you provide the account number, on the place of remark, you'll, you'll, you'll find out the narration or description on why the account was blocked, right? Whether the account was blocked by the system. Because it's possible the system de de detected a fraudulent activities and decided to block. It's also possible that your staff or you decided to block the account for a purpose. So whatever it is, you can actually come back and look at the remark or the purpose of why the account was blocked. And you can always see uh, who blocked the account, which is by, right? So you're always seeing who blocks their account, right? So we have the last option, which said remove restrictions. So all you need to do is to click on the remove, all right? It will give you a notification, it will give you a notifier to understand if you really want to proceed with this. It can be by error. So once you are sure, right, that you want to proceed with you go ahead and click on remove. Right, so it gave you the successful message that the uh, that the um, the restriction has been removed. Anyway, it takes some few seconds for the restriction to be removed, and in some instant, it can actually be removed instantly. But the basic thing you actually notify the system to go ahead and remove restrictions on that, and go ahead and remove every basic restrictions. So we're going to jump into the second options, right, which is um placing of PNC, which simply represents post low credit. So you do not want credit alert only. You do not want the customer to be able to fund their wallet, right? Or to be able to credit or to be able to accept money in this case, right? But you want them to be able to withdraw their money, but you don't want them to be able to credit their money. So these are two different ways. But why the block? The block acts per handle the both credit and debit, right? But we have another, which is called, uh, um, PNC post no post no credit. This simply means you want to specify or want to divide. Say okay, no, uh, I want the customer to be able to perform one. I don't want your customer to be able to perform the other, right? So the first one we'll be looking at is post is post no credit. So you want the customer to not be able to deposit, right? I remember the customer can can withdraw his money, but he cannot add another money onto his account. So we'll be looking at post no credit and also be doing a practical, right? So you also don't understand what's happening, right? So at uh, this time, you also select the customer, right? And you select, at this time, you are expected to select block deposit because basically what, uh, what um, post no credit does for you is to block deposit. You do not want a credit alert or a credit transaction on the customer's account. You can also place the same reason why you do not want this, uh, transaction to occur. It's important you notify or write why this transaction should not happen, right? So that um, the next staff or whoever that is there, who, who, whom, the, uh, whom the customer meets, he'll be able to resolve the issue as fast as possible, instead of always reaching out to who blocked the account. By your narration or description, they're able to know, okay, this is the purpose why you block the account and investigation can go in place before an account will be unblocked, right? Okay, this is how the, this is how you can actually use to um, place the a similar way. So you just go ahead and and do the and place the restrictions, right? So um, like I said on this one, I'm going to be making it practical so that you understand. We'll, we'll come back to the series. We'll come back to the series of blocking an account. But right now, all I want to do, remember. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, I have one here, post no, uh, no debit. I'll just go ahead and remove it. So I'll, I'll go ahead and remove the both of them while I reapply because I have two restrictions on the account so that we'll just focus on one aspect of it. Okay, right. So, okay, so um, I'll go ahead. What I want to apply right now is post no credit, post no debit, uh, post no credit, which is simply mean block deposit, right? 
So I'll go ahead and apply it again. I've removed every restriction. So we only have one restriction here based on the account. So, okay. So I'll go ahead and make, um, and practice, and make it practical. So, um, okay, I'll go copy this account number, then go to savings management. Let's assume that the customer now brings money and said, okay, I want to deposit. You can easily press the account number there. So once you place it, the only the account accounts will be showing, or the, any other account will be hidden. So you can go ahead and click on deposit, right? So uh, the next, you can go ahead and enter the, the amount you want to and put your description of the deposit. So once you hit on send, so you see what the system respond back to you that user is restricted from performing this transaction, right? And to make this amazing, to make this amazing and to make this easier for you, we have a button here that says verify. Okay, all you need to do is to click on the verify options, right? So on the below verify, we have a section which is called restriction. So you're able to see why the account is why the account was blocked and who blocked the account, right? So you're able to tell that you had a clue on why the account was blocked. So if there's if the comments say hold the customer, don't allow him go hold and notify us, so just go ahead and notify the but understanding this that you do, must not actually have access to a restriction feature for you to be able to remove. All right, but yeah, able to actually view only the restriction that's performed that is made on the account part time. Uh, so uh, why I'm not able to deposit it because of a restriction was set and this is the narration or the description of the of the restrictions, right? So this is how you actually know when you want to um, a deposit and I say restriction, you're able, easily able to click on verify on that same area to be able to understand why the restrictions occur, right? And at this time, I'm also able to perform my withdrawal, which, which I expect should actually go smoothly or should be successful, okay? The, 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 the minimum of this account is actually a thousand naira. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and, uh, I'll just go ahead and move to the next section. So we'll be actually be looking at uh, the next option, which is called post, post no uh, uh, debit, right? So this simply means that I'm able to credit the customer, but I'm not able to debit the customer. So the other way around, right? So all I need to do is to, is to go back to my customer management. I right? then click on the customer restriction I'll, I'll try my possible best to see how I can make this faster because of the timing of the video. Okay, so go ahead and remove the post no credits. Okay, I'm removing it from the section post no credits. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed it. So I'll just place another. Okay, so I'm placing another. This time around, I'm not blocking deposit. I'm, I'm blocking the other, which is called withdrawal, right? So the withdrawal simply represent the post no debit so post no debit represent block um block uh withdrawal so i'll just go ahead select block withdrawal select the customer put my narration on why i want to block withdrawals so this simply means the customer is able to be depositing his money but he does not have access to withdraw those money right so i'll just go ahead and uh, and click on um, set right so once I click on set, so this simply means that the customer is able to deposit, but he cannot withdraw his money. So we'll just make it practical before we move to the next section, all right? So uh, if you watched the, the previous steps we followed, right? If you follow, uh, my time, if you watched the uh, previous step we followed, the customer is, is not able to deposit, but at this time, hence I've actually given the customer access, you should be able to deposit, um, at this time because because uh restriction on that aspect has actually been removed right okay but uh if i actually return back to the same place and i said okay i want to perform a withdrawal you find out that the that the system tells me that i'm not allowed it's actually restricted because i actually blocked the I actually blocked the customer from performing a withdrawal transactions okay so this is we've actually look, looked at um We've actually looked at block an account, which represents uh, no credit or debit will happen. We've actually looked at uh, post no post no credit, which simply mean block deposit. We've actually looked at 
post no debit, which simply means block withdrawals. So we'll be looking at uh, USSD and what so we'll be looking at them at the same time because of our time, right? So I'll just go back, um, go to the customer, customer management, click on profile. All right. So the essence of the block uh, uh the WhatsApp and the USSD restrictions. Some some a person might not have access to this feature, depending on the kind of business and the kind of access you want to give to your customer. So I'm going to the customer profile, then go ahead and click on edit, which is the pen, right? So we have different kind of restrictions on USSD. And I believe I think two more will, will be added in the soonest, right? So we have the uh, WhatsApp controllers, right? So do you want to give them access to use WhatsApp um, WhatsApp banking? If they are using WhatsApp banking, do you want to give them access to full, full access or partial access? Full access simply means they're able to check their balance, transact, buy FM, buy data, that's full access. They're also able to disable them at all. They don't have access to WhatsApp bot. They can carry out their transaction via the mobile app, but not on the WhatsApp um, banking, right? So we also have the last options, which you can select to say, okay, the only thing I want them to do at this time is for them to only check their balance, but not to perform any transaction via the WhatsApp. So you're able to set a kind of restrictions on. So if a customer complain, okay, I cannot have access, or I no longer have access to buy airtime to buy that. This simply means that the access has been changed to only change check on balance, right? You can also change it back to full access. You can also able to disable it at all, which they, which simply means they cannot have any access anymore to the WhatsApp banking features. So we have similar options here on the USSD, right? You are able to give them full access. We simply mean they will see all the menu. They're, they're able to check their balance, buy airtime, make transfer to any bank and so on, right? You're also able to um, specify if it is only balance you want them to have access to just check that and do not want them to perform any transactions. It can still go ahead. And you're also able to select the middle, which is the disable access so that they won't have any access at all on the on the USSD or WhatsApp board. So this is how to actually set the restriction. We'll be looking at the last option, which is the uh, lend and lend or hold an amount, amount and or lend the amount and keeping track of the lend amount. amount. So we're we'll looking at that on the next video. So please stay tuned with me as I share this more. Thank you very much.